Hello everyone, my name is Alicia and I am excited to be sharing with you this video all about desserts. More specifically, our favorite new dessert recipes of 2022. My husband and I are on Weight Watchers. We have been doing it consistently now for about three years, but on and off since 2010. And in that time, we have come across a lot of different recipes, come up with a lot of different recipes, and desserts are definitely something that I make a lot of, I love to have, and they're easily incorporated into the Weight Watcher plan or diet. And so I made quite a few this past year. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you our favorite new dessert recipes that we tried out this past year. Now I did just recently do a video on our favorite WW dinners of 2022. I will link that up above and down below if you wanna check that out as well. But again, this video is all about desserts. So let me jump in and get started with the first one. This first one is for two ingredient dough air fryer funnel cakes. Now, if you're familiar with my channel at all, you know I absolutely love the two ingredient dough and all the different ways that you can use it. And so when I saw this recipe, I knew I wanted to try it and it definitely did not disappoint. I do mine in the air fryer, but you can also do these in the oven if you wish. So in a medium sized bowl here, you're gonna just take all your ingredients, starting with your flour and add them in. So that's a cup of flour a cup of fat-free Greek yogurt, half teaspoon cinnamon, teaspoon vanilla, and then you're gonna just mix all that together until it starts to form a dough. And then it says you can continue to kind of mix it with your hands for another couple minutes. And now on a piece of parchment paper, I'm gonna sprinkle a little flour and I'm going to work my dough, and this dough is really sticky. And when I make the two ingredient dough for things, I usually only use the three quarter cup Greek yogurt to prevent this right here. Um, but I wanted to follow the recipe exact, so I'm doing it with the proportions that they used, but it is, ending up being a really, really sticky dough, which I figured it would. So I'm gonna keep working this a little bit on the parchment paper, and then I will be back. Okay, I've got this dough, I think, where I want it. So now you're supposed to cut it into fours, which I'm gonna do. And then you're supposed to take each fourth and break that into six pieces. And then take each one of those six and roll it out into, it says an eight to 10 inch rope. We need a little more flour because this dough is still sticky. So I'm going to roll them out into eight to 10 inch ropes. All right, now that I've got those all rolled out, you're supposed to kind of just loosely pile them on top of each other. Like that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do that same thing with the last three here. I've got these all done and I've got my air fryer preheated to 375, so now I'm gonna take two of them and put them in my basket. And I'm just using a silicone liner in my basket. Recipe says to spray cooking spray on the bottom of the basket, but I'm not going to because I've got my liner here. So I'm gonna just set two of these in the basket. And actually, I'm gonna put all four of mine in because it's big enough to do all four. And then I am gonna spritz the tops of these with a little olive oil spray. And then I'm gonna cook these for says five minutes at 375. I'm gonna check mine probably at four though, just to be on the safe side because my air fryer cooks a little faster than most I think. But I'll be back once these are done. 
Here they are at five minutes. I'm thinking they are done. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them out, put them on a plate and let them cool just a little bit before I dust them with the powdered sugar. Okay, I let these cool just a couple of minutes so that the powdered sugar doesn't melt on them, hopefully. And then it says to take one and a half tablespoons of powdered sugar and dust them with that. So I've got a tablespoon in here, actually a little over. I'm gonna just dust these with the powdered sugar. And I still got quite a bit left, but I think that's more than enough powdered sugar as far as I'm concerned. So I'm not gonna use the whole one and a half tablespoons, but that is what they look like. They smell really good. Okay, I'll have my hubby try one of these. Let us know what they, what he thinks. They smell good, don't you think? Yeah. Powdered sugar. Myself, yeah. <laughs> it's in your beer. <laughs> it's all good. That's what I'm saying. I don't think you need the whole one and a half tablespoons of powdered sugar on those, but I'll close up in there. Yeah, it tastes good. Is the dough done? Mm-hmm. Okay. You don't sound totally thrilled. Not your favorite? No, it's not bad. It's not knock your socks off. What's in them? It's just the two ingredient dough and then it's got vanilla and cinnamon and then the powdered sugar. Yeah, so it's so. got just a... It's got a real light taste of cinnamon. Mm -hmm. So maybe more, that. maybe more cinnamon. Yeah. So that's, I mean, it tastes good, mm -hmm. especially the powdered sugar on there. Mm -hmm. And the two ingredient pizza dough really actually makes a, a nice base for a dessert like that. But more cinnamon. More flavor. Okay. More cowbell. More cowbell. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> I was actually thinking when I was looking at that that. Uh, half a teaspoon didn't sound like a whole lot of cinnamon to me either, but I wanted to follow it as they had it. So yeah, um, I guess more cinnamon. You could add other stuff to this too. Maybe even a little bit of salt. Well, there's salt in the self-rising flour. Yeah. How many points? They're four points. Yeah. They're not a bad size. That's true. So four Does points. Does the powdered sugar add points? Um, yes. I don't know how much off the top of my head because it's only a tablespoon and a half and I didn't, I probably used half a tablespoon for that right there. Yeah. So not a lot, honestly, I wouldn't think. I think if I had a little stronger cinnamon flavor, I'd say that was worth four points. Okay. So but you can tell it's a, I don't think it would be an, say hi, Rocky. an, an Rocky. insubstantial um, hi. dessert. Okay. Well, let me try a bite because now I'm curious. Let's see what I think. I'm trying to get flour on my camera. Or flour, powdered sugar. Yeah, that's good. But I see what you're saying. It needs more, yeah. more cinnamon. Just a little bit. So I would, I would personally, it is really good though. I would personally bump that up to you. A teaspoon instead of the half, I think that would probably give it enough. Um, but yeah, they're good. I think that's worth four points if you're looking for something a little sweet. Pretty good. Next up are these mini mocha cheesecakes with ginger snap crust. I absolutely love cheesecake. It's definitely one of my favorite desserts, so I'm always looking for new ways to make it. And this mocha version with ginger snap crust was really good. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my almond milk here and I'm gonna measure out four teaspoons or that would be the same as a tablespoon and one teaspoon. Then I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna heat it in my microwave for about 15 seconds or until it's warm. And now that I've got that warmed up, I'm gonna add two teaspoons of this espresso instant coffee to it. And I'm gonna just stir that in there. And if you don't have almond milk or 
some other type of milk, you could just use water too. Not a, that'd be totally fine, I think. All right, so I've got this all mixed together, so now I'm gonna go ahead and set that aside and work on the rest of it. Okay, here in my mixer, and you could do this by hand or with a hand mixer if you want, but I'm gonna make my life easier and use my KitchenAid. And I'm gonna add in my cream cheese first. I don't think I said when I was going over ingredients, but you want your cream cheese to be softened or at room temperature, and that's just gonna make it a whole lot easier as far as getting things mixed together correctly. So I'm gonna add that in, sugar, and I'm gonna mix the two of these together real well. All right, that's looking good. So now I'm gonna add in my three quarter cup Greek yogurt, my teaspoon vanilla, my coffee mixture, and then I'm gonna mix all that together real well. And then while that is mixing together, I'm gonna go ahead and weigh out a serving of these chocolate chips, which is 14 grams or about 30 chips. And I'm gonna go ahead and put these in the microwave for about 15 seconds to get them melted. And back over here, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my chocolate, and then I'm gonna stir that in. And also, I have got my oven preheating to 375 right now. And then lastly, I am gonna add in an egg. Now, I completely forgot to show this in the ingredients, but as always, I will have all the ingredients down below, and that will be on the list. So now I'm gonna go ahead and mix that in. All right, that looks good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and get my muffin tin over here ready. So I'm gonna just be lining my muffin tin with these silicone liners. I will have a link for these down below where I get these on Amazon. I really like them, I use them all the time and they just work really well. This stuff does not stick very much at all to them and it's just nice to have a reusable liner instead of like the paper ones and now i'm going to take my ginger snap cookies and i'm going to just lay one on the bottom of each one of these liners and as i always say when i show these mini cheesecakes if you want to do a crust you can i just think this is way easier so i use cookies almost all the time. I have done crust before, but when you're doing these little mini ones, it's a whole lot of work. Okay, so now that I've got that done, I'm gonna take my filling and I'm going to evenly fill these. Make a big mess as usual. <laughs> and I'm just using this ice cream scoop, which is what I typically use. And it works pretty well. These all filled. Now I'm gonna bake them in my preheated oven at 375 and I'm gonna start them off at 15 minutes. I'll be back once these are done. I let these cook just about 18 minutes and they're looking done. They have just the very slightest little jiggle in the middle to them which is what I'm looking for because these are gonna continue to cook for a little bit. So now I'm gonna just let these cool completely which will take about 45 minutes, an hour, and then I'll come back and dust them. These have completely cooled, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my cocoa powder and I'm going to start off with a tablespoon of it. I'm gonna just sprinkle it on the tops of these. And I ended up with a lot of that left, so I would say you only need about one and a half teaspoons of the cocoa powder. But that is it. I'll go ahead and plate some of these up and have my hubby give them a try. Okay, and I've got a few of them on a plate here so you can see them a little closer up. Now these are gonna be five points a piece. And as I said in the beginning, if you wanna use a sugar substitute, they're gonna be four points. But as always, I will have the recipe builder link down below so you can check out what they would be for you. Also, these do need to be refrigerated and I would suggest actually before eating them that you refrigerate them 
for at least two hours, two to four hours. Even better would be to let them sit overnight and they're just gonna taste better. And that's with any type of cheesecake really. It just tastes better once it's been refrigerated for a little bit. So definitely would suggest that, but we're gonna go ahead and try these now. And as I said, we just, or I just let these sit for about an hour to cool enough to dust them, but we'll go ahead and give them a try and I'll let you know what we think. Say hi. Did you warn everybody? About what? That you were gonna show me. Oh, yeah, I did already. Oh. There you are. You wanna show everyone? Yeah. <laughs> Didn't you get that comment? Oh yeah, now I know what you're talking about. Warn us before you show him yeah. comment. Yeah. We'll show the inside of that. Mm, maybe that instead. Yeah, okay. Now you've had the different cheesecakes I've done before. Yeah. This one's kind of a little different, obviously. <coughs> I was breathing some of that powder. Oh, <laughs> the cocoa powder? Yeah. Okay. Oh, um, so it's really good. <clears throat> the first bite, you really get that espresso. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it's almost got a, a caramel quality to it after that and I think it's a combination of the cheesecake and the um, ginger snap. Hmm, interesting. I figured the ginger would go good with the coffee and the chocolate it flavor does, it though. Goes, it goes really well and it's nice and firm like a, a crust would be versus it getting mushy in the process. So those work well the, mm -hmm. in there then? Yeah. Okay cool. Yeah it's really good. This next one is a lightened up version of apple fritter bundt cake now this is a lightened up version of a recipe that I already have and have done a video on actually on my channel, but it is not Weight Watcher friendly. It's not low calorie. And so I wanted to kind of lighten that recipe up that I already have and see if I can make it more Weight Watcher friendly. First step is to get my apples peeled, cored and chopped. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Got my apples chopped up. I ended up doing just over three cups I used four of those apples. I think I said I was gonna do two cups. I meant three. Um, and this is, like I said, just over. In a medium-sized pan, I'm gonna add in my apples. Two tablespoons water, quarter cup of that Lakanto Classic, two teaspoons cornstarch, and three quarter teaspoon apple pie spice. And on medium heat, I'm gonna just kind of stir this all together and let this cook in here for a few minutes until those apples start to soften. For the brown sugar mixture, I'm gonna add in quarter cup packed light brown sugar and a quarter cup packed Truvia and then a half teaspoon apple pie spice. I'm gonna just get this all mixed together really well like that and then set that aside. In a medium bowl, you're gonna add in your dry ingredients for your cake, which is two and a quarter cups all-purpose flour, teaspoon baking soda, teaspoon baking powder, teaspoon apple pie spice, and half a teaspoon salt. And then you're gonna just mix that until those are all combined. And then set this aside. In my stand mixer, I'm gonna add in my third cup butter spread, and half cup Lakanto Classic. And then I'm gonna just mix the two of those together really well. Now I'm gonna add in my two eggs, cup Greek yogurt, unsweetened applesauce, teaspoon vanilla, and then I'm gonna mix all that together really well. My apples are looking good, so now what I'm gonna do is take them off the heat and set them aside until I'm ready for them. Now that that's all mixed together, I'm gonna add in my flour mixture, and I'm gonna mix that together just until it's combined. And that looks good. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my bunt pan and put this together. I've got my bunt pan here, and my bunt pan 
has definitely seen some wear and tear, so I really like to spray it really, really well with a nonstick spray. This stuff, Baker's Joy, works pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and spray this very liberally with that. So now that I've got that well sprayed, I'm gonna take about half of my brown sugar and apple pie spice mixture, and I'm gonna just kind of sprinkle this on the bottom of the pan. Next up, I'm gonna take half of my cake batter, and I'm going to just kind of drop that on the bottom of the pan over that brown sugar. And then I'm gonna just kind of spread this in here the best that I can. I've also got my oven preheating to 350 right now. Next up, I'm gonna take my apples and I'm gonna just kind of pour them or lay them in here as evenly as I can on top of that cake batter. So now that I've got all those apples in there, I'm gonna take my remaining brown sugar mixture and I'm gonna just kind of sprinkle that over the tops of my apples. And then finally, I'm going to cover that with my remaining cake batter. And again, just try and spread this out as evenly as you can while covering the apples. All right, I've got that done. So now what I'm gonna do is bake this in my preheated oven for probably about 40 minutes. It may be a little less or a little more, but I will check on it around 35 minutes, see how it's doing, and I will be back once it is done. I let this bake for 40 minutes. It's looking done, so I went ahead and pulled it out, and now I'm gonna let it cool for about 10 minutes before I try to take it out of the bunt pan. I let this sit in the bunt pan for about 10 minutes went ahead and took it out on my cake stand here. And that's how she's looking. Came out pretty good. So now I'm gonna let this completely cool before I glaze it. For my glaze, I'm gonna go ahead and weigh out 100 grams of confectioner sugar or powdered sugar. Okay, I've got 100 grams there. So now to that, I'm gonna add two tablespoons water. And then I'm gonna just whisk that together really well. And that looks good. If you want yours thicker than that, just use a little less water. You can basically, I would recommend start with a tablespoon of water and then just go to your desired thickness. But I like mine a little, little more on the watery side, like that, because it makes for pouring it on really easy. But anyway, that is ready to go as soon as my cake is completely cooled. I've let this cool completely, so now I'm gonna go ahead and add my glaze to it. Just gonna drizzle it over the top. All right, I've got all that glaze on. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut out a serving size show you what that is and also what this looks like inside. All right, I've cut a serving size out of this, which is a 16th. And I don't know if you can see in there very well, but that is what it looks like inside. All those nice apples right in the center. And then here is a close up of a piece of it, which again is a 16th. Not the biggest piece, but you know, still decent, decent size. Six points per serving. We'll go ahead and give this a try and let you know what it tastes like. All right, I got my heavy here to give this a try.
Like, yeah, so that's, I mean, it's very apple-y. Yeah, he doesn't, um, he doesn't really care for apple. I mean, you can, it's really, it's really nice dessert. Not, I don't, I think if you gave that to somebody without telling them it was Weight Watcher friendly, I don't think they'd be able to tell. Let me try, because I want to, yeah, that's so kind it's, of. It's not, I mean, it's moist. Um, the breading's really pleasant and the apple filling tastes how it should. Mm. And then you get the really super sweet uh, drizzle. Mm. But because there's not very much of it, it, it really complements the whole flavor profile. Yeah, I mean, comparing that to the other one that I do that has full sugar, butter, all the uh, point high stuff, that's pretty good. Yeah. It'd be interesting, man, that'd be a whole lot of effort, but to have two The of both, both of them? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, I haven't done my other one in a while, but from memory, that tastes pretty close. So I'm happy with it. And definitely a whole lot less points with this one than the other version. And lastly were these copycat Starbucks pumpkin cream cheese muffins. These were so good. I made them several times after making them this first time. Just really good. If you like the Starbucks muffins, I wouldn't say they taste just like them, but they are definitely delicious. First thing I'm gonna do is get my oven preheating to 420, and then I've got my quarter cup of those pumpkin seeds, and I'm gonna just do kind of a rough chop on these, like that. And then in a small bowl here, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of that Truvia and a quarter teaspoon of my pumpkin pie spice. And I'm gonna just get that all stirred together. And now I'm gonna go ahead and set this aside. And then over here in a small frying pan, I'm gonna go ahead and add my tablespoon of Brummel and Brown and let that melt in there. And I've just got this on a medium heat. Now that that's melted, I'm gonna add in my pumpkin seeds. And I'm gonna let those cook in there for it says two to three minutes. And now I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of that Truvia and I'm gonna stir this all together and let this cook in here for another minute or two or until it's caramelized. Okay, I've been stirring this for the last minute and a half or so and it looks good. So now I'm gonna take that off the heat and I'm gonna add it to my brown sugar and pumpkin pie spice. I'll stir that together like that and now I'm gonna set this aside until I need it. In a medium sized bowl here, I am going to add in my flour, which again is two cups, tablespoon pumpkin pie spice, and my baking soda, baking powder, and salt. And then I'm gonna just whisk all these together really well. And now I'm gonna set that aside. In my stand mixer, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my half cup Brummel and Brown and my three quarter cup Lacano Classic. And then I'm going to just beat the two of these together for a minute and it says on medium speed. Now I'm going to go ahead and add in my eggs. And I'm going to beat those in on high for two minutes. Now I'm going to add in my quarter cup unsweetened applesauce and my can of pumpkin. And then I'm gonna mix that at a low speed just until it's combined. And now I'm gonna add in my dry ingredients and mix those in just until they're combined. Okay, that looks good. So now I'm gonna get my muffin tin and get it all lined. I've got my muffin tin and I've got it lined with these silicone liners that I like to use. So now I'm gonna take my little ice cream scoop here and I'm gonna just fill all of these up. I've got these filled and I ended up filling four more because they're pretty full, all of them. The recipe says 12, but I'm gonna do 16 just because like I said, they're pretty full and I still have to add the toppings and the cream cheese. 
So speaking of cream cheese, I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside. And I've got my cream cheese here in a bowl. I'm gonna go ahead and heat that for probably about 15 seconds just to get it a little bit more softened. And then I'm gonna add a quarter cup of that Lakanto, and that is the Lakanto Classic, and then a teaspoon of vanilla extract. But I'm gonna go ahead and just whisk this all together until it is smooth. That looks good, so now I'm gonna transfer it to a piping bag. You could also use a Ziploc bag if you don't have a piping bag and just cut the tip off of it. Okay, I've got my cream cheese mixture in here and then I've got my topping, my praline topping over here. I'm gonna go ahead and just sprinkle some of that on the tops of all my muffins. Now that I've got those all topped, I'm gonna take my cream cheese mixture and I just cut off the tip of my piping bag and I'm gonna just Put this down a little bit into the batter and squeeze some in. And it says two to three tablespoons, which is kind of hard to tell when you're piping into something, but I'll try to get it as even as I can. I've got all these filled, so now I'm gonna go ahead and put these in my preheated oven at 420, and it says to bake for five minutes and then after five minutes, while leaving the muffins in, lower the temp down to 350 and bake for another 20 minutes or until muffins are golden on top. So mine may take a little bit less than that extra 20 minutes because I did do four or 16 instead of 12, but I will, I'll check them around 15 minutes and I will be back once they are done. I let these cook for just about 16 minutes. They're looking good, so I pulled them out. And now you're supposed to let them cool for about five, 10 minutes and remove them from the pan to a cooling rack. So I'm gonna go ahead, let them sit, and then remove them to let them cool on a cooling rack. Okay, it has been several hours. These are completely cooled now. Um, my hubby's here, so I'm gonna give them a try. I'm gonna give them a try too. Go ahead and break into one of those bad boys. These are five points a piece on Weight Watchers. Mm, look good. I'll try a bite while you're chewing. Did you just, did you put, oh, you put the whole thing in your mouth, didn't you? Mm. Yeah, you wouldn't know that was Weight mm. Watchers. That's good. Yeah. I mean, it's got the nice uh, spice cake mm -hmm. flavor and then the cream cheese. And these these are almost caramelized. They are caramelized. Yeah. The little pup, uh -huh. pumpkin seeds, yeah. papitas, however well, you say that. That's really good. That is really good. That cream cheese. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I guess he likes it. That cream cheese pairs really well with that pumpkin. Now, that being said, do they taste like Starbucks? Um, no, I don't think they taste like the Starbucks muffins, but they taste really good. And for five points, it's a pretty good sized muffin for five points. It's a little close up. Ooh, maybe not. Definitely worth five points in my opinion. Those were our favorite new Weight Watcher dessert recipes of 2022. I hope you guys enjoyed and maybe this gave you some ideas. If you're interested in any of these recipes, be sure to check down in the description box below where you'll find links to the full videos, where you will find the full list of ingredients, instructions, and links to my recipe builder for all of these recipes. But thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one.